Hey, still hearts, how y'all doing? This is Jada Lynn. Welcome to In the Raw. This is a channel where we sit and discuss narcissism, what it sounds like, what it looks like, and what is up close and personal in your face. All right, now, so. First of all, I just wanted to say my disclaimer because I haven't been saying my disclaimer in these videos and I've just been forgetting. Um, but I am in no shape or form, any kind of a doctor. I'm not a PhD, I'm not a therapist, I'm not any kind, I'm not none of that. Even though I am trying to study to be, you know, but we just gonna see how far that goes. But I just happen to be a regular girl who done experienced a lot of narcissism in my family life, my friendship life, and my adulthood um, with relationships. So I feel like I have, um, I, I can throw my little two cents on narcissism. But in this video, I wanted to discuss the scapegoat versus the golden child. Uh, I talk a lot about relationships, but there is an origin of how it all started. Uh, throughout, like, based off this last, the, the last narcissistic relationship that I ended, it really helped me do a lot of heavy research. That was the new rebirth of myself, uh, finding out what kind of person I am and why I was dealing with a lot of the things that I was dealing with in relationships, friendships, and my family members. Um, and what I've learned is that if you have any kind of like codependency issues uh, and you have not healed those things, whatever you dealt with in your childhood, you are going to manifest that in your adulthood. Okay, if you're empathic, you're going to be a narcissistic magnet. Uh, if you are a highly sensitive person, you are going to be a narcissistic magnet. I have all three. I am recovering, working on, you know, codependency uh, throughout my entire life. Uh, I have put other people before me. Whatever other people wanted, um, I made that you know, prominent in my life. And I would put whatever it is that I wanted on the side. What I, Whatever I wanted was not important. It never got acknowledged. Uh, and it was just on the side. Hopefully I can get to it. And most of the time I never get to it. And if I did get to it, I didn't have enough energy to put into it. Do you hear what I mean? So like codependency, empathic, uh, highly sensitive person, that's me. I have all three of them. And yes, that's the perfect match made in heaven for narcissism. And um, growing up at home, I grew up to a narcissistic mother and, um, and I was the golden child. Now, I know that with research, it does say that the golden child has a tendency most likely to turn out to be the next narcissist. But that is only if the golden child ha doesn't have an awakening. By the age of 13, 14 years old, my early teenage years, I found myself calling my mother out on whatever kind of BS that she was doing, whatever she was saying, I would call it out. Ba -da 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 -da, ba -da 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 -da, ba -da 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 -da. She didn't like it. But up until then, my sister was the scapegoat. My sister was the person that she was the black sheep of the family. She caused the trouble. She was doing a lot of stuff. But what nobody really paid attention to was that she was the next narcissist in the making. She really was. And in a later video, another video, I will discuss to you why that is possible based off of research that I have been doing. Um, my sister is more of a narcissist than I could ever be. Uh, the two of us are like night and day. We don't, we're, we're water and oil. We don't mix. We don't. And for a very long time, I wondered like, is this really my sister? What is going on? I don't, 
I'll act like her. What's wrong? We are on two separate pages. Forget the pages. We are in two separate books. What is going on? Type thing. And um, I learned with research that there's a golden child, there's a scapegoat. And growing up, I was the golden child. I was my mother's favorite. There was favoritism between my sister and I. And you can tell that with my sister sitting there watching me be the favorite child to my mother, yes, it bothered her. So there was a lot of jealousy. There was a lot of resentment and hatred towards me and things like of that nature. And um, in my mother's eyes, I could do no wrong up until I got to the age of 13, 14 years old when I really started calling her out on a lot of the things that she said. Like growing up when we were younger, I asked my mother, you know, what happened to you and pops why did you and my pops you know get a divorce and her response to me was girl girl you know yo daddy is cheap yo daddy let me tell you what your daddy did girl let me tell you what your daddy did my friends and i was getting ready to go out and hang out at the mall and i asked him to give me some money and guess how much money he gave me and i said how much money did he give you twenty dollars girl twenty dollars yo daddy gave me twenty dollars to go to the mall and hang out with my friends and then on top of that told me don't you spend it all in one area now mm, girl you know that ain't even right and i'm just sitting up here looking like well twenty wow okay twenty dollars but I was younger then, so I'm thinking $20 is a good amount of money to get you something, but I was younger. She was, But when I got home and I spoke to my pops and I asked him about it, then he kind of chuckled a bit. He was like, <laughs> why don't you have a seat? I knew we was gonna have this conversation sooner or later. So then I asked, what happened? And then he flat out told me, your mother cheated on me. Your mother had an affair and I asked for a divorce. Simple as that. Completely different story than what my mother had told me. But this is the time when I started waking up. So what I was doing was at this age, I was around 13, 14 years old, I was paying attention to what my mother was saying, how she was saying it. I was feeling her emotions because I am very empathic. I, I'm very in tune with my emotions. And um, I was feeling, I was actually trying to feel what she was saying and uh, it just wasn't sitting with me. It was as if I ate some bad food. And uh, she was in a relationship at this time and this is where things started to shift between her and I. She was with a, um, a person that was, he was such a sweetheart. He was so sweet. But at the time they were married, uh, he had a bad seizure disorder and um she was cheating on him just like how she did with my father so when i called him to call to speak speak to my mother and see how she was doing he says oh your mother didn't tell you and i said well what was she supposed to tell me we're no longer together anymore you know i found out she was cheating on me what and i really cared about this dude because out of all of the men that my mother was with she she really crapped on this one. This dude was similar to my pops. He was a good dude. He was a really good guy. Uh, he wasn't my daddy, but he was a really good guy. And I really okayed this guy. And when I spoke to my mom, I was so upset. And I spoke to my mom. Mind you, I'm 13, 14. When I spoke to my moms, then that's when it was like, you know what, uh, mama, you know what you're doing? You're doing the same thing that you did to daddy. You're doing the same exact thing that you did to daddy. When you, now mind you, I'm 13, 14 years old. And I told my mom, when you married my stepdad, you married him through sickness and in health. So whatever sickness he had before you guys got married, you knew of it. You should be there for him. And when I was telling her that, she hung up in my face. I was so hurt. I was so heartbroken. And my pops heard me crying and he came in the room and he asked, well, what happened? And when I explained to him what happened, then that's when he consoled me. 
he just gave me a whole bunch of love. He held me, told me it was going to be all right and things like that. But then the very last word was, you know, the truth hurts. Sometimes it really hurts even more coming from a child your age. And I will never forget the words that came out of his mouth at that point. So that was the turnaround between my mother and I. I, at that point, was no longer the golden child because I had become privy on my mother's tactics. I had become privy of her lies, her games, and the things that she was doing, which was completely wrong, completely wrong. So, and by me calling her out on it was kind of like setting a boundary and letting her know that, uh-uh, this child is going to be trouble. So now things shifted. I was no longer the golden child and now my sister was more of the golden child, the favorite, the one she was showing off, you know, and let, it's more fitting because in a later video I will discuss, you know, the things that my sister has done as to the reason why my mother and my sister make a great team with each other. But I just wanted to come on here real quick and to discuss what it was in my situation when I was about 13, 14 years old, and then, you know, calling my mother out on her behavior, the things she was doing and saying, and the things that I found out that she told me that was absolutely not true. Um, yeah, I ended up losing that golden child uh, position, which is not a bad thing. It's a great thing, but it just, at the time, it doesn't feel like it. And unfortunately, to this day, uh, I don't have a close relationship with my mother. I wish that I could, but I can't bow down to the behavior, the things that she does. I cannot bow down to it. Um, and I just want to come on here and discuss it with you and let you guys know what the signs is, what it looks like when it is up close and personal in your face. And I will see you guys in the next video. All right.